So I'd like to talk to you about C++ standardization. I've had this question come up about twice during this CppCon and like 50 times during the past year, which is that people think of C++ standardization as this thing that happens somewhere in the planet but nobody actually knows how it works and where it is. So I figured I should give a talk about that. And somebody said, could you do this talk this week? I think I could, but there's no way I'm gonna get a time slot. Oh, hey, we have a time slot in two hours. Can you do that? Sure. So why things are the way they are. Well, everybody knows IO streams. Does anybody like IO streams? <laughs> well, it's two people. It's two more than I expected. We have a wide string, which is wide or wider, but everything may fit or may just not fit. It's constant width, except when it isn't. We have stood future and stood async, which is synchronous. So, yeah. There are things that have explanations why they are the way they are. And the best way to learn them is to ask the people that designed them why they ended up being this way. But maybe you have better ideas. Like, why, what if we get rid of operator comma entirely? And then we can have multidimensional arrays with a good syntax. It's like, instead of two square brackets, we get a comma. It's gonna be awesome. Or what if we can overload a tertiary call operator and have an if statement in our own classes? Or what if we had std audio? So, how do you get started? Well, it's not that hard, but let's try the simple things first. Let's just make a library. Well, you can make a library, upload it to GitHub, tell everybody about it, hey, I made a library, go download it. And everybody's going to see it and be like, yeah, but that's just a library. There's tons more. Well, I'll submit it to Boost, which is better, but it's in the end still a library. And especially when you want to make some types for interacting with other people, like this is a standard UTF-8 string, please use this other standard UTF-8 string, the interchange types can't work there. So in many cases, you'd like things in the standard. And especially when you want to do complicated stuff, like I want to change the language. Well, you can start by forking GCC and LLVM and just modify it to suit your language change, but it's gonna be impossible to upstream because there's no way they're gonna say yes to that. So what about forking the standard itself? Yes, it's on GitHub. You can make changes and send a pull request. <laughs> and unless you went to the standard meeting and discussed it ahead of time, you will get rejected the hardest possible way. So what's the way to do this? Well, start by sending an email to the ICCPP mailing list. It's the easiest way to get access. It's the easiest way to get a bit of feedback about your idea because maybe somebody else thought about this. Maybe nobody thought of it. Or maybe it's actually something that somebody else thought of like five years ago but didn't carry on because it needed a bit of work and somebody else could pick it up. The next thing is to create a paper because you have an idea, you want to actually send it in the world, discuss it at the meeting. It's not gonna get discussed unless there's a paper. You can write a document that just says what you want. It doesn't have to be in a certain kind of template, but there are some templates to help you include all the details you'll need. And if you're one of the people reading all the proposals for the next meeting in four weeks, it, it kind of helps. So you have to submit them four weeks before the meeting, and if you are late, you will get just after the meeting. And then go to the meeting and champion your paper. Or if you're not able to go there, find somebody else that is there to do it for you. And papers are not just something that says, I would like to deprecate operator comma. It can also be like, I have this thing in NetTS and it doesn't do quite what we need it to do. So we have this use case, so please take this use case into account. And that at least gets the use case into the people discussing NetTS. And I still need to write a few of these myself. Then you go to a meeting. And that is actually as simple as just going, booking a hotel or an Airbnb or a motel and travel. And then tell the host of the meeting that you will be there. They like to know how many people are gonna be there so that the rooms are big enough and they sort of have an estimation of how much coffee to get but you are able to go there. And if you go there, if you, go there you will get a C++ committee experience which exists of six major groups. The ones on the left are for language changes, the ones on the right are for library changes. And from top to bottom, they are the incubators, the regular rooms, and the wording rooms. So you'll go, for example, your language change goes to evolution working group incubator, then to evolution working group, uh, evolution working group to discuss what it is and whether it's a good idea, and then to core working group to make sure it's exactly formatted right, put into the standard, shipped. But it's going to take a while because it takes three years to get through a new version. So in a sequence of nine meetings in a row around the world, they will discuss it, they will get to a standardized version, they will get everything worked out, put into the standard, sent out for a committee approval. So how does that work? Well, you get six days at each of those meetings. The first five are just anybody can come and vote, literally anybody, and there's one day of official votes. But only the official people in the national bodies can vote. So what is the national body? What does it even mean? Well, national body is something that is required because ISO is an international standard. 
I'll get on with it. The international standard means <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's uh, about one more minute. Sorry about that. Uh, the international standard means that it's a ratified standard across the planet and com uh, countries will have the ability to, uh, to video something in there and it's fairly complicated. So talk to the convener, Herb Sutter, if you want more details. It's a closed meeting that's open to everybody. <laughs> Which means that you can go there, everybody is invited, everybody can go there and to make sure everybody gets to speak their mind, stuff that's discussed there is not taken out of the meeting. So that's what is meant by it being a closed meeting. At the end, there will be straw polls, and the straw polls can be shared, but everything else, ask for permission. And the last point I want to make is that C++ standardization is not done by a group of elite people somewhere way off. It's everybody who's an expert in some area. And even if you are brand new to C++, you're an expert at knowing what things are confusing to new people. <laughs> so even if you're brand new to it, come to the meeting and talk to people, because we also want to be accessible to new people. And everybody is welcome. There is a good code of conduct. It is enforced. You will have a safe experience. And we want more diverse people. So we want all of you to come up and join. Thank you very much. <laughs>